um, before the construction, you, the client comes, they will probably approach you. Probably the client will have already identified an architect who will come up with the drawings for the project that they want to take up. From there, we basically assist in doing a feasibility study to identify and see if the project is viable. Once the, we have a preliminary design from the architect, we then now start doing a cost estimate. And cost estimates can vary according to the amount that we come up with. Sometimes you'll find that probably we do you do the first estimate, probably it goes over and above the client's budget. So you have to go back to the drawing board again. The architect will probably have to do some modifications to his design, change a few things. Once we agree, we do another estimate until to a point where we agree on a figure that can be able to guide us once we go into tendering. So from there, we now do a bill of quantities, which is now a more firm document because we'll have uh, the final designs from the architect and designs from the structural engineer, which we then now give to contractors for tendering and from there now we do an evaluation then we once we identify a successful bidder you award the contract uh, you sign the contract document from there now we go to site and in the site our part is mostly doing remeasurements because you see when you're doing the bills of quantities some things are based on assumptions especially when it comes to the site conditions when you go to excavate the foundation you might find that probably you're excavating deeper than you had anticipated so we constantly do the measurements even as we proceed just to make sure that the areas that are captured in the boq are what is being done on ground and then we also do valuations and financial appraisals just to help see how the project is pairing in terms of costs if there are any variations that we are having in the project what impact are they having in the project? Are they positive impact or a negative impact on the cost? And then we also now do a final account now at the very end. The financial appraisal is going to be a guide towards the final account. So the final account is done at the very end. And there now we come to an agreement. You will give We give a document which we now agree with the contractor because um, we try to avoid these situations where you have a dispute. The QS is always there from the beginning to the very end but in some situations you find that clients prefer to probably engage us at the beginning and then proceed on their own which can be very it can lead to a lot of disadvantages towards the client in terms of managing the costs the bills of quantities is basically a document that we use for preparation of a tender document. You take the quantities, you measure all areas um, so that when a contractor is bidding, they, they have the same exact information. Because the cost estimate, you find that you're probably, it's not very defined. Because as I was saying, the design continues to change. So when you get to a point where now the client is comfortable with the estimate, then now you proceed to prepare bills of quantity. So the bills of quantities will basically have the drawings and the specifications. So from the bills of quantities, it's very easy for a contractor who is bidding to see exactly what work they are going to be uptaking. The description helps them to know what exactly the work is going to entail. It can vary. You can have a bills of quantities that is labor only. You can have a, what we call a schedule of materials that is different. And now we have the firm bills of quantities, which takes it, which in which the quantities include the labor the cost of material and the profits and overheads that the contractor is supposed to make when it comes to his rates, the rates that he's giving. You can have a situation where the, probably a client just wants a labor-only contract. That means the client is going to be the one providing the materials and the contractor is only providing labor. In such a situation, the client will also tell you to prepare now what I'm calling a schedule of materials. So from the bills of quantities that we prepare, which has the quantities, let's say if we're taking a room a square room the bills of quantities will show the area of the wall that you're going to do the area of the floors the area of the tiles that are going to be inside there so you see from there you can be able to now come up with a schedule of materials because you have an area 
you can now be able to come up with how many tiles will, will be needed in a specific room. How many masonry blocks will be needed to come up with, let's say, 10 square meters of walling. The bills of quantities is basically a guide to everything else. And from there, now we will now give the what we are calling the tender document. The tender document is somewhat a package. It gives the conditions of contract, the contract that you'll be using. The contracts vary. In Kenya, mostly we use what we call the Public Procurement Oversight Authority contract document, which is mostly used for government projects. And then we have the JBC, the Joint Building Council contract. It's also called the Green Book by the Architectural Association of Kenya. That is mostly used for private projects. And then we have another one called FIDIC. FIDIC is for international projects. The bills of quantities and the tender document will specify exactly what contract you'll be using. And that is now where you form a basis for your contract administration and management in a project. And it will also have now it has the instructions to tenderers which will help to guide them in pricing of their bills of quantities it will have a form of tender a form of tender is basically a one page summary where now a contractor states how much they are going to be doing their work for and the duration of time that they are going to be doing it for and now they sign against it and they have a witness everything that is done is done in a specific way we have standards that that guide us we use the british standards that guide Kenyan construction. So that has to be very clear in your document. Mm -hmm.